As an architectural designer, I keep seeing people make these mistakes when it comes to refurbishing their investment properties and it's costing them thousands. Keep watching the full video so you don't make them too. And later on, I'll also show you a huge mistake that I see people make time and time again. And it will not only bring your build to a standstill, but will also cost you a huge chunk of money. So the first mistake I see is not understanding or establishing clear roles and responsibilities from the beginning. And what I mean by that is, when you're discussing things with your builder, you need to make sure that they clearly understand and know what's expected from them from the get-go. For example, are they completing the whole project? Are they just doing part project? Are you getting somebody else in to come and do the electrics? And if so, if you are um, separating all the different sections out, does everybody know how one thing's gonna be left so that the other person or the other tradesman can take over? and in what condition that tradesman needs that specific area to be in so that they can then come and do their works as well. This all needs to be agreed from the get-go just so that there's no cross wires, everyone understands what is needed and knows what's expected of each other so that you can move forward. Because what you don't want to do is you don't want everyone to turn around and almost say or blame one another for something not being completed because that will only delay things for example if something needs to be in a set state for the electrician to then come in and do something you don't want them to turn around and say well actually i can't do this part because this is not in this state so things like that can massively delay your projects and that can be really, really important to you. And it's really crucial that we get these ironed out from the start because if you are taking out, for example, leveraging or something like a bridge loan, which is a really, really high interest loan to bridge that gap between the remortgage if your property is not in a lettable state from the beginning, it could really increase delays on your project. So we need to make sure that simple things like this are ironed out from the beginning and they're not a cause to delay your project, which is ultimately gonna cost you more money in the long run. So establishing clear roles and responsibilities from the beginning can help to offset or eliminate these type of delays straight away so that then you can complete your build and switch nicely onto your buy to let mortgage from your expensive bridge loan. And moving on to my next mistake that I see people make, and that's not writing a robust enough specification or scope of works is what we call it in the industry. So this is just a brief sort of list of the items that you think you require for your project. You need to make sure that this is a realistic scope of items that you've got. And there's no pressure here, because obviously if this is your first build, you might not know everything that you need to put down. Even if you jot down a few points on a piece of paper and then you can walk around with your builder and just go over things and they might be able to point out other things that you may have overlooked. But just so you've got a piece of paper with some items on there, just as a starting point would be fine for now. Once you've done more of these and once you've got into your rhythm and you know what you're looking for, you can then start to write a more comprehensive specification or scope of works. I can go over scope of works or specification vacation writing in another video if you'd like just comment down below and I can go over that in a future video time cost quality yeah don't worry I'm not just shouting out random words this is the next mistake that I see a lot of people making is making too many changes last minute to your specification or your scope and if you do that this will really badly affect those three things that I've just discussed with you <laughs> that I've just shouted out to you so these three things form what we in the industry would say a magic triangle. So any last minute changes will affect either one of these three things in a different way. They could affect them dramatically. So if you and your builder do need to make any last minute changes, you need to make sure that you and your builder consider these three things equally and you fully understand the effects on the project that these three things could make. So for example, you might want to make a last minute change to your bath. You might have already scoped out for a standard bath and a last minute change would be that you've seen this fancy 
talking bath that's going to regulate the heat of the water coming into the bathtub, give you a massage, make you a cup of tea. So you're basically going to want to know how these three things are going to be affected by this change that you're going to initiate so that you can make a well-rounded decision on how to proceed. After all, we want to kill uncertainty and reduce risk as much as possible. So for this extravagant bath, your builder might say, for example, in terms of time, it's going to take an extra two years to install this prototype bath. And in terms of cost, it's going to cost you an extra three million pounds. And in terms of quality, it's going to need gold-plated plumbing to be installed. really like that bath. Yes, I'm being dramatic and it's a really random example, but from that you can see that if you're just doing a standard buy to let where you want to keep costs down as much as possible, that is not going to be feasible for you. So that change, you're going to say, no thank you. What I'm basically trying to say is that you need to know the effects on time, cost, quality for any change that you're going to implement. So that leads me nicely on to my next mistake that I see people making. And that is not agreeing a rough program with the builder from the outset as well. And what I mean by this is you need to know some rough date. You wanna know when you start date is, when you finish date is. You wanna know key dates that your builder needs your input on. And you're gonna to want to agree payments and dates for payments. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that they correlate to when certain tasks are completed. So another mistake that I see people making, and this is quite a huge, a big one, is not factoring enough risk into your project. You need to make a realistic allowance for risk when you're initially scoping out your project. And I spoke earlier about making last minute changes. Well, if you've factored in your risk and thought about this from the get-go, then last minute changes should be kept to a, a minimum. Obviously, when you're working with existing properties, there are unknowns. There are certain things that you don't know until you actually get in there and your builder actually starts knocking walls down and, and whatever. You might have planned to do an extension, dig, start to dig down and realise that you need to have more extensive foundations, for example, which is what happened to me on my property. But things like this happen, don't beat yourself up about it. It's just things that happen that are out of your control. What we're trying to do is just minimise as much risk as possible that could have been foreseen. So what I tend to do is have a risk register included in my specification. This will cover things like, for example, I'll put an allowance aside, say 5k for a new roof. If I'm going to do an extension, 4k for extra foundation works. Just little things like that. And spoiler alert, I do actually have a risk register format that's in the project plan. And that project plan at the minute, for a limited time only, is free to download. So the details are in the description box for you. I also factor in at least about 10% as a contingency as well, just to give a bit of an added extra buffer as well. Don't go too crazy with it. Otherwise you'll look at every project and think, well, this isn't viable, the, the figures aren't, aren't adding up. So you need to have some sort of balance with that. And the next mistake that I see people making and this might be the most important mistake of all and that is not pinging the like button down below shameless plug sorry <laughs> But seriously, the next mistake that I see people making is neglecting health and safety and CDM on site as well. Please make sure your builder and any labourers that you do employ, they are abiding by CDM regulations. And I can do a video on that as well if you just comment CDM down below and I can go into that into more detail. And another mistake that I see people making, and this is quite a big one, and it's also quite an obvious one as well, is people not adhering to planning requirements or building control requirements. If you don't abide by planning requirements or keep planning officers and builder control officers on side with your projects and keep them informed of what you're doing all the way through, even before you're going to do something, you know, if you've got the odd change that you need to make, if you just pick up the phone and call your local planning officer, sometimes you can get it resolved there and then on the phone. But I have seen a lot of people not follow the requirements and it can cost you quite dearly. So planning officers, they do have the power to take enforcement action and they can prosecute for non-compliance. So this is a major one. You want to make sure that they are involved in the project, they know what's happening, you're getting all your paperwork in place and you're discharging all of your conditions as per the planning requirements. So from the beginning you really need to have an approach on how you're going to tackle planning and building control, whether you're working on a HMO, as I said, the Article 4, for 
cons conservation in heritage areas. You need to be aware of the local planning policies that are in place and also your building control. You need to make sure that that's all in place as well because your building control, that will dictate your workmanship, the build quality, fire safety and accessible inclusion as well. So there's a lot that goes with that. So please, please do your research on this. And if you're unsure, you can always get guidance from a local architect or architectural designer like myself. Our contact details are in the description box below. If you just need to run things past us or you just want to get some advice, you can always contact us that way. So yeah, it's just not worth the headache. So guys, these were just a few mistakes that I see being made by clients in the past. I'm a big advocate for people doing their own research, so please look into this further when you're doing your own projects. Now that we've gone over a few mistakes that I see people making whilst they're managing their live projects, you really need to know what you need to do next just before your project is coming to an end. So watch this video next where I share with you how to deal with the last finishing touches and last fiddly bit that are outstanding just before your project finishes, AKA snagging, where I share with you some points you need to discuss with your builder before they hand the keys back to you. Thanks guys, bye.